Hello, Cookies here. I want to show you guys how to take a look at a Resto Shaman log. So, uh, first off, this is just a Hungering Destroyer Heroic Farm kill. And we, you know, we had like a really hard parse. And I just want to show that just because, you know, you may have like a really high or low parse does not necessarily mean that you are playing good or bad. There's things that we need to analyze and figure out and understand where we can still improve or you know where we're where we're making mistakes and whatnot so uh the first thing is this is my own log this is me on the rest of druid and i think as a rest of druid there isn't a bunch of uh like tips or tricks as far as i'm aware for like analyzing a log for a rest of druid because a lot of it comes down to your target selection and just overall like upkeeping your buffs i think resto druid is a very like upkeeping based healer it's very you need to have a lot of rejuves active before boss damage goes out you need to have you know you need to maintain those rejuves and not refresh them at the wrong time you need to maintain life bloom and efflorescence on the tank and on the raid and it's all of these like kind of upkeeping and managing all these different timed abilities and stuff so in order to look at this i think the best tool is wow analyzer i think wow analyzer does almost everything you need to improve on as a as a rest of druid it will just kind of feed you that information so we have the wow analyzer right here and right off the bat we can see that we're doing overall a pretty good job and this is probably why we resulted in a decent parse on this fight not including that it was a very fast kill and whatnot but we're playing the class properly we're doing you know we're doing the right things there are some things that we can fix here um, like we have a bad talent that didn't really do that much healing and then there's all this stuff that can kind of be improved and then, um, but there are a couple things to take away from here. So we can see like some of these bars are not that full, so we can check them out. So this one is mostly, we didn't press flourish enough. Uh, we could have pressed it like an extra extra time or two. Uh, Innervate could be used a little bit more, but this is also dependent on like, you know, our group and when we're planning to use Innervate and stuff like that, or when people need them. And then we have keep life bloom and efflorescence active. It looks like our life bloom percentage was really good. And our efflorescence uptime was not very good. This is only 54%. So I just want to show you guys how to then turn this into the log and view where you were struggling on efflorescence uptime or where you could have maybe, or maybe why efflorescence uptime is low. Maybe there's a reason for it. So we go into the log here and all we're going to do is we're going to go over to buffs. And then we're going to go to all sources up here at the top and just hover over ourselves. And then there's immediately an efflorescence thing that pops up. This is each efflorescence cast we did throughout the fight. So we cast it F flow five times, but we just want to click on efflorescence so that it shows all of them. And here we can already see, and then we click on it again and it opens up this little table and then it'll show us each efflorescence and the uptime on it. So we should be seeing refreshes like this, where it's a very, very small gap even smaller than this in most cases. That's how our efflorescence should look across the entire fight for the entire duration. So, you know, why is there this massive gap in the start? Why is there this massive gap? And why is there no F flow for the rest of the fight at the end? Um, so what we can do here is we can zoom into these and just view like when it happens. So for instance, here we have, um, it's not, here efflorescence fell off at about 22 to 23 seconds we can see. So all we're going to do is take that information. I like to open another tab with the same log and we just go to the replay function up here at the top. And all we're going to do is click on ourselves down here in the raid frames. And then we're just going to go to that time. So again, it's at about 22 seconds, 23 seconds. So we just go to 22 or 23 and we're just going to see what we were doing in the fight that caused us to maybe forget about this. So we can see here that we're channeling convoke. So that's the first reason why we're not dropping it. And then you can see we just start spamming rejuves on the raid. We cast a wild growth. So all this tells us is that we just completely spaced out and did not put down F flow again. Like we just didn't see that it was, you know, inactive. And then we can see here as we stack back in, we drop another F flow. And that's what reminds us, okay, time to drop another F flow. We're stacking back up. Like the group's, you know, getting close together. So I'm gonna throw down an F flow. But we need to take this information and we could have had this F flow still going this entire time. You could argue that we had to spread out so I didn't drop F flow because the raid wasn't going to be stacked up anymore. But if we go back and look when F flow fell off right here at 22 seconds, the raid is still stacked up for a very decent amount of time. So that is plenty of spring blossoms that we could be applying to the group if that's the talent that we took. Um, and even if we didn't take that talent, this just added healing for a good 10 seconds before we, we don't spread out till 34. 
So that means that's 12 seconds of flow that just could have been healing the, the raid. So, and then again, we can go back, we can reset the zoom up here, and then we can look at these other gaps and just figure out, you know, maybe rethink through our thought process of like, why, why did we forget it here? Was it just simply we didn't keep track of the, you know, the cooldown or the, uh, the uptime on our flow? Did, were we doing something else that was important? Were we spread out? Were we, you know, was it not a good time to use flow? All these things factor in, and we really want to push for like 80 to 90. I mean, you should, your goal should be 100% uptime on efflorescence. And the way to use efflorescence, like I said, because you do want these small gaps in between sometimes, because you don't want to, there is no like pandemic window like there is for dots in the game or hots. So for efflow, you want to drop it after the last tick has expired. Um, so yeah, that's just a couple of things to check out for um, Resto Druid. So just moving into this, use WoW Analyzer. It's definitely your best tool. And um, it will help you like understand you know where you need to improve the most. And then there's always those kind of min maxi things that you could go back into Warcraft logs and like really kind of analyze to figure out you know well how am I you know maybe it says you're not using wild growth effectively, so you could go back in logs and look at your wild growth cast and see you know when you were using it or if you're using it on the wrong targets and stuff like that. So hopefully this helps. Um, thank you for watching and have a good one.